today we will uh, begin with fifth, fifth chapter of quantum mechanics so chapter fifth operators in quantum mechanics operators in quantum mechanics so i will discuss this last chapter first and then i will come to uh, third chapter namely applications of time independent schrodinger equation and then fourth chapter namely spherically symmetric potentials so this chapter uh, being relatively uh, simpler and short we are going to attempt this chapter first the first article in this chapter which we are going to discuss is hermitian operators hermitian operators <coughs> To understand what a Hermitian operator is, we must first understand what the Hermitian adjoint of an operator is. So before we will go to Hermitian operator, we will first study or discuss what, what is uh, the Hermitian adjoint of an operator is. Uh, let A be an operator, so we know that in quantum mechanics. Uh, operator represents some physical quantity or some classical dynamical variable. So consider an operator A which is denoted by like this by putting cap on its head but uh, after this we will uh, avoid putting the uh, caps on the heads of the operators in order to avoid them putting them repeatedly. So let A be uh, an operator then its Hermitian adjoint is denoted by a dagger, a dagger. Hermitian adjoint is denoted by a dagger and under most circumstances it is entirely different operator from A. For example, uh, there is no concrete connection between Hermitian adjoint and a given operator. Here is the example. Suppose uh, an operator is a complex number, then its Hermitian adjoint is denoted by C dagger and its Hermitian adjoint is its conjugate. For a complex number, its Hermitian adjoint its, is its complex conjugate. If you have this differential operator d by dx, then its Hermitian adjoint is minus d by dx. So there is no concrete relationship between Hermitian adjoint and a given operator. Many times it is an entirely different operator from a given operator. So let us see uh, the definition of Hermitian adjoint also called as Hermitian conjugate. So Hermitian adjoint. Hermitian adjoint of an operator adjoint many times called as conjugate Hermitian conjugate of a given operator <clears throat> so we will consider an operator a representing some classical variable classical dynamical variable or some physical uh, property a and let phi and psi phi and psi be any two arbitrary well behaved functions then Hermitian adjoint of A denoted by A dagger is defined through this integral. So integral minus infinity to infinity conjugate of first function phi star A operating on psi d tau is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity then a changes its place comes before before phi star becomes a dagger phi and then conjugate or star psi d2 psi d2 so this is the definition of hermitian adjoint of an operator a so what this integral tells me this integral tells me that as far as value of this integral is concerned, it doesn't matter whether A operates on psi 
और इट्स एडजॉइंट ऑपरेट्स ऑन अनदर फंक्शन फाइव स्टार द वैल्यू रिमेन्स अनचेंज ओके एज एज फार एज वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटीग्रल इज कंसर्न डजेंट मैटर वेदर ए ऑपरेट्स ऑन साय और इट्स एडजॉइंट ए डैगर ऑपरेट्स ऑन अनदर फंक्शन फाइव स्टार द वैल्यू ऑफ द इंटीग्रल रिमेन्स अनचेंज remember that in the hermitian adjoint there are two things that are happening which we have to remember a is changing its place and it comes before phi star when it comes before phi star then there are two changes that are occurring in the operator number 1 it is becoming dagger and then it's conjugate so these are the two changes that are happening when an operator changes its come when operator changes its place and comes before phi star it becomes dagger and then it's conjugate these are the two changes so this is the integral definition of hermitian adjoint of an operator a so in terms of uh, scalar product or inner product this definition is relatively simple we are writing or conjugate of first function then a operating on psi and for right hand side i will write this dagger a dagger phi psi so this is the inner product definition of hermitian adjoint of an operator a first term is a conjugate term therefore this is star term or conjugate term and second term is <coughs> normal term similarly here first term is a conjugate term and second term is normal term so this is in terms of scalar product or inner product so this is relatively simple definitions uh, definition which we will be using while solving or proving many things uh, as far as hermitian operators they are concerned uh, in the modern quantum mechanics we have uh dirac's notations to denote this which are called as brand kate notations so in terms of brand kate notations actually brand kate notations they are beyond uh, scope of your syllabus but still in order to uh, tell you uh, this particular thing this can be written as this is called as bra phi which is conjugate function and then a psi this is called as kate this is bra and this is kate so this forms bracket so the result of bracket is a number this is equal to bra is a dagger phi psi a dagger phi psi so this is bra and kate definition or in terms of in terms of modern uh, notations this is the definition for hermitian adjoint of an operator so these three equations so they are defining hermitian adjoint of an operator hermitian adjoint of an operator what is important is uh, we we are uh, extensively we will be extensively using this particular definition of inner product or scalar product to define or to prove some fundamental results of hermitian adjoint remember in between these two commas comma is there so let us see some of the problems regarding this hermitian adjoint so the first problem which i am going to solve is find the hermitian adjoint find the hermitian adjoint of a complex number c of a complex number c number c okay so since you want to find out her hermitian adjoint of a complex number uh we will consider this inner product phi c psi phi c psi this inner product we mean 
यू आर फाइंडिंग हर्मिशियन एट ज्वाइंट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑपरेटर विच इज अपेयरिंग इन द सेकेंड टर्म एंड द प्लेस इज हियर बिफोर दिस वे ऑफ फंक्शन साय ओके सो सी डैगर एक्चुअली सी डैगर एम्प्लाइज कंसिडरेशन ऑफ दिस एंड वी विल राइट इंटीग्रल डेफिनेशन ऑफ दिस इनर प्रोडक्ट और दिस केलर प्रोडक्ट इंटीग्रल माइनस इंफिनिटी टू इंफिनिटी क्वांजिकेट ऑफ फर्स्ट फंक्शन फाइव स्टार देन सी साय डी टो सी साय डी टो सी कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर सी बिंग ए कॉन्स्टंट विल कम आउट ऑफ द इंटीग्रल साइन सो सी इज आउटसाइड हियर इंटीग्रल माइनस इंफिनिटी टू इंफिनिटी फाइव स्टार साय डी टो ओके सो वॉट आई विल डू नाउ इज आई विल पुश this complex conjugate c which is constant which has taken out of the integral sign inside uh, this integral sign so i will make it integrand so what i am writing is minus infinity to infinity when c goes inside i must retain c so what i am writing is i am writing c star phi and then star of the whole quantity c star star so it will become c which is there so i am retaining my original c which was constant here and phi becomes phi star psi d2 so this is the conjugate term and this is normal term so right hand side will become c star phi so first term being conjugate and then second term this Okay, so if I am considering this as LHS, I have got this particular thing. So this implies that, or therefore, phi c psi equal to c dagger phi psi, c dagger phi psi, and this implies, this implies. that hermitian adjoint of this is this operator hermitian adjoint of this operator is this operator so this implies c dagger equal to c so hermitian adjoint of a complex number is its conjugate that is what we have proved through this first example uh, what is important is uh, uh hermitian adjoint which you want to find out must appear must appear in the scalar or inner product definition now second problem is if d equal to daba by daba x find d dagger find d dagger if d equal to daba by daba x find d dagger so here what we have what we are going to consider is consider this inner product phi d psi phi d psi okay so this stands for d dagger so this means that i am finding hermitian adjoint of this operator hermitian adjoint of this operator integral definition of this inner product is integral minus infinity to infinity conjugate of first and then second operating on the second function and then dx because d is daba by daba x in the next step i will substitute minus infinity to infinity phi star and then daba psi by daba x because d is d by dx and then multiplied by dx so this is the integral which we are going to solve and this must be solved by integration by parts uh, let me remember you the uh, rule of integration by parts if there are first and second function once the first and second functions are uh, decided then first function as it is integral of second minus sin integral sin d dx of first and then integral of second this is what the integration by part rule is so so in this equation which one is first 
first function and which one is the second let me tell you that both are algebraic functions and here the easily integrable function is a second function so dabba psi by dabba x whose derivative whose integral is psi is a second function so remaining function is a first function easily integrable function is a second function because we need integral of second here here also we need integral of second so that becomes second function and this becomes obviously first function so this is equal to first function as it is phi star as it is and then integral of second psi within the limits minus infinity to infinity minus sin integral sin d dx of first dabba phi star by dabba x into integral of second is psi dx okay so this is what we get let me tell you that uh, this first term is a surface term which is zero because the surface is extending up to infinity and we know that when uh, the variable tends to plus minus infinity the wave function as well as its derivative is vanish and therefore this first surface term is zero zero minus this thing i will push this minus sign inside minus dabba phi by dabba x star isn't it dabba dabba x of phi star or dabba dabba uh, phi by dabba x star is one and the same thing psi dx so this is what we get so this indicates that this particular step indicates that what i have on the right hand side is the inner product minus dabba phi by dabba x minus dabba phi by dabba x psi comma psi first term is a conjugate term this is what i get and this is nothing but minus d phi psi minus d phi psi this implies that hermitian adjoint of differential operator d by dx is d by dx is minus d by dx equal to minus d minus d so these two examples prove that the hermitian adjoint of an operator in many circumstances is entirely different operator from the given operator a for complex number its conjugate is its hermitian adjoint for d by dx minus d by dx is its hermitian adjoint then the next property of hermitian adjoints or hermitian conjugates is this particular property third what i am doing is i am adding these two operators together and i am taking its hermitian adjoint the right hand side is a dagger plus b dagger so how will you read this identity hermitian adjoint of sum of two operators is equal to sum of their separate adjoints hermitian adjoint of sum of two operators is equal to sum of their separate adjoints so what we have to consider we have to consider which inner product for a plus b dagger we have to consider this thing phi star and then a plus b psi this inner product we have to consider this means that i am finding hermitian adjoint of this i am finding a plus b dagger integral definition of this inner product is minus infinity to infinity then conjugate of first function and then a plus b operating on psi d2 d2 so this is equal to hermitian adjoint of first operator a operating on psi d2 minus infinity to infinity plus 
इंटीग्रल माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू इन्फिनिटी फाइव स्टार बी साइ डी टो बी साइ डी टो नाउ दिस ऑपरेटर विल कम बिफोर दिस एंड विल बिकम डैगर एंड विल ऑपरेट ऑन फाइव स्टार सिमिलरली बी विल कम बिफोर फाइव स्टार एंड विल बिकम बी डैगर एंड विल ऑपरेट ऑन फाइव स्टार सो दिस इज इक्वल टू ए डैगर फाइ स्टार साइ डी टो प्लस माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू प्लस इन्फिनिटी बी डैगर बी डैगर ऑपरेटिंग ऑन फाइव स्टार साइ डी टो ओके सो दिस इज नथिंग बट दिस थिंग ए डैगर फाइव साइ प्लस B dagger phi psi. First term is conjugate term, and second terms are the normal term. So this thing implies Hermitian adjoint of this is a dagger plus b dagger. So this implies that a plus b Hermitian adjoint of sum of two operators is sum of their separate adjoints. B dagger. Hence the proof. so this is uh, the third identity or uh, one of the important uh, properties possessed by hermitian adjoint now next fourth property which we are going to discuss is i will take hermitian adjoint of product of two operators show that Hermitian adjoint of product of two operators is equal to product of their separate adjoints taken in a reverse order. Okay, Hermitian adjoint of product of two operators is equal to product of their <coughs> separate adjoints taken in a reverse order. So for this we have to consider. For a plus a, a, a b dagger, I have to consider this inner product phi star, and then a b psi, a b psi. The integral definition of this inner product is integral minus infinity to infinity, conjugate of first function phi star, and then a b operating on psi d two. so what happens here is a changes its place comes before this and becomes a dagger and operates on phi star so the first step is a dagger phi star b psi d to this is equal to integral then b comes before this b dagger a dagger phi b dagger a dagger phi and then psi d2 psi d2 conjugate of this term of course a has changed its place has come before phi star and then b has changed its place and come before a dagger phi okay so this is nothing but inner product b dagger a dagger phi Being conjugate term equal to psi, so this equal to this implies that Hermitian adjoint of product of two operators is product of their separate adjoints taken in a reverse order. Hence the proof. Hence the proof. All right. The next property of Hermitian adjoint is fifth property. Show that for any operator a dagger dagger adjoint of adjoint of an operator equal to operator itself. 
adjoint of an adjoint of an operator is equal to operator itself adjoint of adjoint of an operator equal to operator itself so consider a dagger dagger means you have to consider phi star and you want to find out hermitian adjoint of this so this will appear here and then psi integral definition of which is conjugate of first function and then a dagger operating on psi d tau d tau this is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity this will this will change its place will come before phi star and then will become a dagger dagger so this will become a dagger dagger phi conjugate of the whole thing psi d tau okay so dagger dagger is exactly the reverse operation therefore this will result in a and therefore this will become a phi star psi d tau okay so this implies that this is a phi psi a phi psi this implies that hermitian adjoint of this operator a dagger dagger is this operator is this operator remember uh, this is true for any operator that adjoint of adjoint of an operator is equal to operator itself so this is all about hermitian adjoint once we understand the hermitian adjoint then it is very easy to uh, go to uh, hermitian operators the definition of hermitian operator is if adjoint of an operator if adjoint of an operator hermitian adjoint of an operator equal to operator itself then that operator is called as hermitian operator or self adjoint operator i will repeat if adjoint of an operator equal to operator itself then that operator is called as hermitian operator or self adjoint operator remember this is not true for all operators this is true only for certain operators we will discuss some of the examples where some of the uh, operators corresponding to physical quantities or classical dynamical variables are hermitian and some are not so if a dagger equal to a then integral definition of the hermitian operator or self adjoint operator will become for two well behaved functions phi and psi phi and psi if a is a, an operator then its hermitian operator is defined through this integral expression conjugate of first then a operating on psi d tau then this comes before phi star this is equal to integral a phi star psi d tau okay phi star a operating on psi doesn't matter when the same operator operates on phi star and get post multiplied by psi the value of the integral remains unchanged or in terms of inner or scalar product this becomes phi a psi equal to a phi psi as usual the first term is a conjugate term similarly a phi here is a conjugate term and second term is a normal term or in terms of dirac's branket notation phi a psi equal to a phi psi so these three expressions these three equations this integral definition inner or scalar product definition and branket definition is the definition of hermitian operator or self adjoint operator self adjoint operator we are going to discuss uh, some of the examples and properties of uh, these hermitian operators 
let me tell you that uh, the linear momentum operator px is a hermitian operator or is a self adjoint operator is a self adjoint operator so our first uh, example is show that linear momentum linear momentum operator linear momentum operator namely px either cap or doesn't matter even if cap is not there px is hermitian is hermitian or also called as self adjoint self adjoint okay so we have to prove that px is a self adjoint operator or a hermitian operator so what we have to show this inner product phi px psi equal to px phi psi this is what we want to prove so we will start from we are finding hermitian operator of this and this will be this operator so adjoint of an operator equal to operator itself then that operator is hermitian so if we prove this lhs equal to this rhs then px x momentum will be hermitian operator or self adjoint operator consider lhs consider lhs and lhs is this inner product phi px psi and this stands for this inner product minus infinity to infinity conjugate of first function and then px operating on psi dx then explicit form phi star explicit form of this operator is minus ih cross daba by daba x this is operator corresponding to px operates on psi dx so this is what it is minus ih cross being constant will come out of the integral sign minus ih cross minus infinity to infinity phi star and then daba psi by daba x dx this is the integral which we want to solve as usual um, uh, integrand of this integral uh, the both the functions are algebraic functions so first function will be this particular function and this function will be second function why this function is second function because it is easily integrable whose integral is psi and the remaining function is a first function so integrating by parts what i get is minus ih cross then inside this first function as it is phi star then integral of second psi within the limits minus infinity to plus infinity minus sign integral sign minus infinity to infinity d dx of first daba phi star by daba x into integral of second psi dx so this is what this integral is as usual this surface term is zero because it takes the surface extends up to infinity where the wave function its conjugate and derivatives vanish therefore first term in this expression is obviously zero so this is zero and what i get here is minus minus so this becomes uh, my, it has a minus sign here minus i h cross so minus minus will become plus and then i h cross i h cross integral minus infinity to infinity and then daba phi star by daba x psi dx so what i will do here is i will push this i h cross inside so that this will this integral will become minus i h cross minus i h cross d phi by dx star if i am taking star of this 
conjugate of i it, this will become minus i and that is what it is so it has this minus sign minus i h cross minus i h cross d5 by d star and then i am retaining this thing psi dx psi dx so this is nothing but integral minus infinity to infinity this function is nothing but px operator operating on phi its conjugate psi dx this is nothing but this scalar or inner product px phi first term being conjugate term second term is normal term and this is equal to rhs so we have proved that phi px psi inner product phi px psi equal to inner product px phi psi and therefore px x momentum or x component of momentum is a hermitian operator then uh, the next important property of hermitian operator or self adjoint operator which we are going to discuss is second show that eigen values eigen values of hermitian of hermitian operators hermitian operators are all real all real so what we will discuss is uh, uh, in order to prove this particular result uh, we will consider uh, two functions two eigen functions psi1 and psi2 let psi1 and psi2 be two eigen functions of operator a then it satisfies this operator satisfies following eigen value equations when a operates on psi1 i am getting eigen value alpha psi1 when a operates on psi2 then i am getting eigen value beta psi2 equation number 1 equation number 2 let psi1 and psi2 be two eigen functions of of hermitian operator a having eigen values alpha and beta respectively then a will satisfy these two eigen value equations then as we know that a being hermitian it will satisfy the property of hermeticity or being a self adjoint operator it will satisfy the property of self adjointness so since a is hermitian since a is hermitian it will satisfy the following property of hermeticity psi2 star a psi1 d2 equal to integral a psi2 star psi1 d2 okay so this is the hermeticity or self adjointness psi2 star conjugate of second a operating on psi1 a changes its place comes before psi2 star and operates on psi2 star psi1 d2 but as a psi1 equal to alpha psi1 and a psi2 is equal to b psi2 we have from equation 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 we have integral psi2 star alpha psi1 d2 equal to integral a psi2 star a psi2 star means beta psi2 star psi1 d2 d2 this is what we will get now the next step will be this alpha being a eigen value will come out alpha integral psi2 star psi1 d2 equal to this beta star will come out beta star and then psi2 star psi1 psi2 star psi1 d2 d2 
or this is equal to therefore alpha minus beta star integral psi 2 star psi 1 d2 equal to 0 d2 equal to 0 let beta equal to alpha let beta equal to alpha and psi 2 equal to psi 1 equal to psi so with this this particular expression becomes say 4 then 5 then this will become alpha minus alpha star integral psi 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 star psi mod psi square d2 equal to 0 mod psi square d2 equal to 0 since integral mod psi square since mod psi square is not 0 integral mod psi square is not 0 being a norm of psi norm of the function which is always real and positive is not 0 this implies that this alpha minus alpha star must be 0 so this implies this implies that alpha equal to alpha star okay so what this result tells us this result tells us that when number is equal to its conjugate then that quantity or that number is a real number and therefore alpha the real value real the eigenvalues are are real so all such eigenvalues they are real because the eigenvalue is equal to its conjugate the quantity equal to its conjugate so this is important property the significance of this thing eigenvalues of hermitian operators are all real and this is the reason why all observables observables means all those classical dynamical variables all those physical quantities that are directly measurable in a laboratory which results in real values they are denoted or represented by hermitian operators observables or measurable physical quantities they are represented by hermitian operators the reason is since their eigenvalues are real and the measurement of any experiment for any particular physical quantity is real that's the reason why observables are represented by hermitian operators then the last property regarding hermitian operators is this third show that eigen functions of hermitian operators hermitian operators corresponding to corresponding to corresponding to distinct eigenvalues corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal or mutually mutually orthogonal mutually orthogonal as usual the proof will proceed by considering that let psi1 and psi2 be two eigen functions of hermitian operator a corresponding to distinct eigen values alpha and beta what is important here is you cannot equate beta equal to alpha or alpha equal to beta because they are distinct such as one is 3 and another one is 5 these values are distinct they are not same so you cannot assume beta equal to alpha or alpha equal to beta that's it all right as usual uh, uh, this operator a will satisfy following eigenvalue equations a psi 1 equal to alpha psi 1 equation number 1 a operates on psi 2 gives me beta 
and retaining back psi 2 okay as a is hermitian as a is hermitian it will satisfy the following property of hermeticity namely psi 2 star a psi 1 d 2 equal to equal to then this comes before this a psi 2 star psi 1 d 2 so this is what you will get now psi 2 star for a psi, a psi 1 i have alpha psi 1 alpha psi 1 d 2 equal to integral equal to integral a psi 2 star means beta psi 2 star psi 1 d 2 okay all right this will come out alpha will come out and beta star will come out alpha psi 2 star psi 1 d 2 equal to beta star then psi 2 star psi 1 d 2 psi 2 psi 1 then alpha minus beta so as a and b are distinct they cannot be equated to uh, they cannot be equated and therefore uh, since uh, one more thing as eigenvalues are real as eigenvalues eigenvalues of Hermitian operators are real Hermitian operators are real b star equal to b b star equal to b its conjugate is equal to the quantity itself and therefore this gives me alpha minus beta okay integral conjugate of psi 2 psi 1 d 2 equal to 0 okay so here alpha and beta they are distinct they are not same since alpha minus beta is non-zero this implies that this integral psi 2 star psi 1 d 2 this must vanish this must vanish so this implies that psi 1 and psi 2 these two functions they are orthogonal they are mutually orthogonal or they are orthogonal and this is the proof of uh, this particular property so what we have studied today uh, in brief is uh, we have shown that uh, a measurable uh, quantity namely x momentum is a hermitian operator hermitian operators they have all uh, their eigenvalues real and uh, the eigenfunctions corresponding to uh, distinct eigenvalues, they are mutually orthogonal. So today we will stop here.